Alright, doesn't seem like there's any more problems. Oh, that dude's a ba -da -ba! Shining a bright red as always is I Red Luster. Welcome to the Vermander Curse. Now, if you've seen this game already, possibly floating around, you would know it's made by the same guy who made The Man in the Window. So... I don't know what the Vermander curse is, but things are about to get cursed already. Start a new game? Yes, indeed. Oh! You want to see me, Mr. Vermander, sir? Hannah? Oh, Hannah, you can... Mm. Maybe you should get some more sun. A little bit, a little bit more sun. You know? I can't be talking, I'm as pale as Casper the Ghost, but... Oh my god, it's a Let's Player! Hannah, why aren't this month's profits as high as last month's? You know what? I gotta give this guy credit. He made a character with a face that I would really want to punch. Also, why is this portrait 20% paler than his actual face? Well, I guess... I guess it's the lighting. I've been looking all over that piece of paper you gave me earlier, and I don't like the numbers on it. I can't make heads or tails of that dang thing. They raised the threshold on how much you need to donate in order to get your tax deduction. Remember, sir? Ah, yes, taxes. Nobody wants to do them, everybody has them. They did what? They raised my taxes? When was this? Sir, I've been reminding you about this for the last eight months. Goodness gravy, eight months. That's almost an entire year of being reminded something. But it's actually fine, though. You still end up saving way more money than if you didn't get the deduction. So... With the good lord as my witness, I am being swindled. I will not stand for this. No one gets over on J.P. Vermander, no sir. Not now, not ever. But, sir... Now then, where have I been donating all my hard-earned money to again? The hospital, sir. Hospital? Which one? There's only one in town, sir. The only hospital in this godforsaken backwater town and they still have the nerve to swindle me out of my money. Huh. Well, I know exactly how to handle a situation like this. Prepare a ritual, Hannah. Go fetch me my robes. The ritual? But, but Mr. Vermander, sir, please. This is entirely uncalled for. The people in that hospital have done nothing to you, sir. Besides, the difference in profits between this month and last month is only about 1% less, sir. That's nice and all, Hannah, but I don't remember asking. Now, go. We don't have time to waste. Notify me immediately when everything is ready. I just realized his eyelids are not part of the rest of his face. No wonder he looks so weird. Uh, okay, sir. And there she goes. Hello? Hello? Maybe, no, no, that's not the right voice for him. Hello? Uh, hello? H hello? Hello? 
You know what? I'm going to give him a better voice. Hello! Anyone home? I hear ya, I hear ya. Give a gal a minute. Yeah? Ah, hello there. Dr. Etta, I presume. That's me. Who's asking? Fantastic. I'm Morton, the nurse who transferred request you received. Transfer request? What in the world are you talking about? You aren't aware? Surely you've read the email concerning me. We don't get no regular internet out here, sonny boy. The only thing we can get out here is that old satellite connection. And we ain't even got that either. But if you're here to help, I ain't about to complain. You got a lot to learn, so better pay attention. Because I'm only saying this once. I'm all ears, Doctor. When patients come in, I write their information down on this here clipboard. Wouldn't it be better to use the computer instead? Now. Alright, you know what? I can respect Etta for having her ways. Just straight up, no. The waiting room is over here. I ain't much to say about it. All the magazines are older than I am and ain't none of them worth reading no more. Oh, my. We got eight rooms. Three are occupied and the rest ain't. Mr. Lang Boyd is over in room 2A. He had a pretty bad back injury, but we fixed him right up. Miss Tammy Giles is in room 3A. She need one of them teeth pulled, and we ain't got many options for anesthetic. So I gave her some of that old-fashioned medicine I keep on her to sink. Uh, she'll be a little dizzy for a while, but everything else went smooth as silk. Impressive. And there's a woman over in 5A, too. Uh, poor thing cut her hand up real bad on the job. Then she tried to hide it. Her boss found out and sent her here. I ain't managed to figure out her name. Huh. So I wrote her down as Jane Doe and patched her up. Ah, a mystery. I wonder who she is. We ain't known to ask too many questions around here, Mr. Morton. We're here to help. Got it? Understood, Doctor. We got two bathrooms, an operating room, and something like a kitchen. Ooh, excellent. The lights in here don't work half the time. We keep our mess and supply in the OR, but most of the bottles are empty because the budget ain't paying to refill them. And there ain't nothing ever in the fridge, so don't bother checking. Uh, oh. Does anything in this hospital function as intended? Not really. And that's about it. Let's head on back to the front desk so we can get you signed in and start on your first shift. Oh, we teleported. That old sign-in sheet is somewhere over there. I suggest you go ahead and start searching for it yourself, because I ain't about to come look for it. Understood, Doctor. I will find it. In the meanwhile, I better go make my rounds and check up on the patients. Come and find me if you need anything. Oh, I am the. <laughs> uh, I like I I like that detail. We're not just a camera that's floating like in an invisible model. We're a camera inside actual model. 
So, <laughs> if I look down, I can't see past my snoot. Actually, I don't even have to look that far down for it to come into view. It kind of make, kind of makes you think about how your nose is always technically in in your vision, but your eyes just ignore it unless you purposely look at it. It's kind of like that, but in this case, the nose is way too big and obvious to ignore. What was I doing? Oh right, I need to check up on the patients. So one A. Nobody. 2A. Eh? Hello, Satan! How's the missus? Everything alright in here? I'm fine, Doc. Matter of fact, I feel like I can walk out of here right now. Ha 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 ha! Oh. See, he can't even laugh without hurting him. This is exactly why I said, Lang baby, please stay off the roof. It's dangerous. We can pay someone else to clean the gutters. But did he listen? No. He waited until I left for work, and then, when I, and then he tried to get up there himself. One little gust of wind, next thing you know, bam, straight into the hedges. You know, I could have done it if the wind hadn't picked up. That is not the point. You shouldn't have been up there in the first place. Doctor, could you please give this man something to fix his terminal lack of common sense, please? Oh, sorry, honey, but we ain't gotten to fix that. Now, you two try to take it easy, alright? I'll be back later on. Okay. I'm just going to close your door so I know that you are in there. Oh, you're an axolotl. And you are missing a tooth, so you must be... How you feeling, dear? Tammy. Hi, Dr. Edda. What are you doing here? It still ain't sold up yet, huh? Nope. That's fine, dear. At least that tooth ain't gonna bother you no more. Just give us some time and try to get some rest, okay? Okay. She's a little doped up. Though I wonder what they gave her. Old fashioned medicine. Which I can only guess is probably alcohol. Oh! Huh. I actually have a reflection. And it's in real time. Oh, that's cool. Anything in here? Uh, octopus. Okay. How you doing, dear? Okay. Hand is fine, no? You ain't got nothing to worry about. It'll really grow back it is new. Good. Thank you. You're most welcome, dear. Try and get some rest. I'll be back in later. Yes, yes. Alright, that's everyone. I better get back to Mr. Morton. Wait, wait, oh! Okay! First jump scare. Dr. Edda. The phone started ringing while you were gone, so I answered it. And... That is my problem, Hal. The caller won't stop going on and on about rituals and demons. Among other things, I don't understand. I think it may be best for you to talk to her. Huh, there's always something. Honey, honey, slow down. Ain't none of this making sense. Please, 
You have to get out of there right now. My boss just summoned an actual, genuine demon, and now you're all in danger. Uh-huh, and who do you work for again? J.P. Vermander, madam. Uh, who is that doctor? Oh, he's some rich city boy who moved out here when he inherited his family's estate. A lot of folks around here had to pay him rent just because his family owns the land. Yes, that's him exactly. I, I don't know all the details, but there's a blood pact, and a demon, and a curse, and all other kinds of stuff. You need to leave now. Once the clock strikes ten, you won't be able to leave. Isn't that like two minutes? Wow, I, I, I read that clock correctly. Honey, that's less than two minutes. Ain't no way we getting out of here that fast. My goodness, I didn't expect the stakes to be this high on my first night. I'm surprised you two are taking her seriously. If a hospital got a call from someone saying that there's demons coming to the hospital, they're not going to evacuate the hospital. They're just going to be like, okay, you're a loon and hang up. But I am committed at this point. Is there anything we can do to help our situation? I did go snooping into the few old journals cut by the Vermanders. Based on what I've read, if you can make it to sunrise, the demon will leave. But there's a bunch of rules you'll need to follow in order to keep yourself safe. For example, every hour until sunrise, the demon will enter the place it was summoned to. It will travel down the nearest hallway in search of blood. Specifically, your blood. Its own rules prevent it from opening doors to search for you. So keep those closed. Excuse me. A demon that can't open doors? Was this demon being paid? Five ninety nine dollars an hour? What room are you both in right now? The reception area. You'll need to keep that in mind, alright? When the demon arrives, make sure you're all in the same room as when the ritual started. If someone isn't, the demon will know. And once it knows where someone is, closing the doors won't stop it. If you're ready, I can tell you what to expect once 10 o'clock hits. I ain't about to let no demon run roughshod over my house a healing. Just tell us what we need to do, honey. Okay, here's what's going to happen first. The demon places a lot of emphasis on windows for some reason, right? How would we... Why would you ask us right? Like, we're supposed to know that. It'll try to use its powers to open up windows around itself. You're gonna need, and I can't stress this enough... You're gonna need to close any and all windows before the hour is up. Leave one open, the demon gets stronger. And you don't want that, alright? If you finish everything you need before the hour is up, try staring at a clock. I'm sure it'll help pass the extra time faster. I'll stay on the line just in case you need me to repeat something. Good luck, and please be careful. Aw, oh, shucks. I don't get paid enough for this. Alright, guess gotta check all these darn darn windows. How are you two holding up? I know. The kids, Lang, did you even think about them? Their little heads are probably worried sick by now. I know. I open the apology for making them worry. I know you one too. Huh. <sighs> you two all right in here? Yeah, we're fine. Uh-huh. Well, holler if you need something now. Just leave you two alone. Hey. Tammy sits, happily humming to herself. 
Fair enough, Tammy. You do you. Empty. I forgot to close your door. I'm sorry. I... am tired. On work? Sleep for a minute, then hand caught. You fell asleep at work, and that's how your hand got like that? Yes. Oh, you poor thing. Well, at least try to get some rest while you're here, alright? Oh, that is kind of sad. Uh, empty. Empty. Oh. Need to close that. But also empty, so I don't have to worry about it. OR. Nothing in here but pills. Kitchen. Nothing in here. Okay, so I only had to close one window. Oh, bathroom. Why would there be a window in the bathroom? I'm dumb. Uh, so I guess that's everything. Oh, okay. You click and hold on the clock for time to go fast. All the windows have been closed. And then it arrived. Monster Vision! Yeah, that's right, you skedaddle out of here, you monster, you. Here's what's going to happen next. There's something about the demon's power that resonates with TV signals, right? It will turn on any TV you can manage it can gain access to. They never show anything besides static once it takes control, but that's still bad. If it happens, just turn the TV off. That'll kick it out for a while. But don't leave any TV that is controlling on, alright? It won't end well. Uh... Doctor, you look tired. That's cause I am. Then let me handle things this hour. You should rest. And now I'm Morton. Uh, oh. Ma'am. Ma'am. What are you doing out of your room? Hello. Ma'am, this is the waiting area. If strange things are happening tonight. I need you to get back to your room, please. <laughs> My bad. I'll go back now. Okay, that's that sorted. Kind of funny that she walked past us without us noticing. Alright, windows closed. Oh, no TV. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The job, Lang. Now you're probably going to have to go miss work. Who knows how they'll react. Heck, now I'm missing work. I know. We'll be fine. I can't keep up his voice. It's too hard on my throat. Watch. Come morning, and I'm gonna walk out of here good as new. <sighs> I sure hope so. Well, they're still doing good. She's where she belongs. Oh, but no. Uh, how you doing? Hurting is again? Anything do? Please? Okay, I'll go grab you some medicine. If there is any. Okay, uh, medicine. The pain meds are kept here. Pick up the meds. Would you like the blue pill? It will put you back into Wonderland. 
Madam, I've brought you your scheduled pain medication. Yes, good. Good indeed. And, uh... Do you believe that's everything situated? Uh, yeah. Uh, so far, game's not that hard. Uh, the rules are simple, but I think they're gonna keep getting more and more complicated. Just double check on her. No TVs in the bathroom. Okay, I think we're free to, uh... Skip time. The time was 12 a.m. All the windows had been closed. All the televisions had been turned off. And then it arrived. Yeah, that's right, demon. Skidaddle. Get out of here. You ain't gonna mess with this, Aunt Eda. Here's what's going to happen this time. The demon will try and draw power from any lights it can gain access to, right? You'll know it's inside a room trying to siphon power when the lights start flickering. When this happens, all you need to do is enter the room, close the door, and shut your eyes for a few seconds. You're really going to need to use the space inside your mind to focus for this to work. Oh, that's, that's cute. You're telling me to close my eyes, I need to press a space bar. You'll know it worked when the light stops flickering. And make sure you do it right, okay? If you don't, then... Hmm? I ain't as tired anymore. You can handle- you can let me handle things this time. Sounds good to me, Doctor. You take this hour, then I'll take the next. Okay, so... Um, Tammy. Tammy is not in the waiting room. Good. Let's see, nothing in there. How are you two doing? Just promise me you won't go doing something as reckless again, all right? As of tonight, I am officially staying far, far away from the roof. And ladders, too. Unless we can save some extra money if I... Lang! Ha <laughs> ha! I'm kidding. Don't look at me like that. Okay, you two are still in good spirits. Oh, I need to shut the door, right. I'm sorry. Hey, that worked. Also, Tammy, where'd you go? Gosh dang, lady. That, Tammy, I get that you're beautiful. Don't get me wrong, you was beautiful. But now is not the time to check your makeup. Hey, there's some lady in the mirror looking at me. That's you, honey. You need to go on and get yourself back to your room now. Hehe, <laughs> my bad. I'll go back now. Gosh dang it. You should just go to sleep already. Uh, you don't need the fresh air. Here. Best rest in long time. Oh, that's good to hear. You, you rest as much as you need, dear. Just actually, you know what? If you could lay down and go to sleep, that'd be great. Because then I wouldn't have to worry about you doing anything anymore. Alright, I think that's everyone situated. I didn't see any more flickering lights. So, uh, let's just skip time. 
The time was 1 a.m. All the windows had been closed. All the televisions turned off. And none of the lights were left flickering. And then it arrived. As weak as it started. Oh no, the demon's here. But he can't open doors. Oh, he can only look into the inside rooms which has nobody in them. All right, what's the next rule? Here's what's going to happen next. You'd be surprised how much a demon's powers resonate with electronics. It can gain access into the phone lines and try to gain power too. If you notice the phone continuously ringing, that's exactly what you're trying to do, all right? Now this is going to sound crazy, but you'll need to pick up the phone and listen. Pay attention, because this part is important. If you hear anything, and I mean anything, on the other end, you gotta recite this mantra. Your presence is not welcomed here. You must depart immediately. Don't worry, you'll remember it when the time comes. But if there's silence on the other end of the phone, then keep quiet. Silence means it probably hasn't figured out the phone's location yet. And you don't want to give it any clues, alright? Okay, if the phone rings, answer. Silence meets silence, noise meets noise. No TV for nobody. Hey, you all need anything? I think my back's beginning to hurtin' again. Guess that medicine I had earlier is wearing off or something. Alright, I'll go get you some new medicine. Tammy's gone missing again. Gosh dang it, Tammy! Where are you go doggone gone this time? Not in the bathrooms. The light's flickering in here, so... Alright, there we go. Hello? You listen closely. Go away! Good. Go away. Just be gone. Tammy, this is not your room. Hey, why is it so dark in here? I'm not actually sure, ma'am. But strange things are happening tonight, and I need you to go back to your room, please. Hee <laughs> hee, my bad. I'll go back now. Gosh dang it, Tammy. You need to stop wandering around. I'm guessing if I don't give these people their meds, they will do something stupid. So that's why I'm getting them their meds. Here you go, Mr. Satan. And chug this down. Just in time, my back was starting to act up again. Whew! Good, good. Uh, do you need anything? Jasmine? What? Uh, thanks for staying here with me. I'm sorry to put you through all this. I'm just glad you're okay. We can deal with everything else later on. That is true, and that is love, and that is beautiful. Well, I think that's it. The time was 2 a.m. All the windows closed. All the TVs off. None of the lights were flickering. And all the phones had been answered correctly. Then it arrived. Oh, it's the demon who can't open doors. 
Why don't you go back to Five Nights at Freddy's so you can be with the other animatronics that can't open doors? Yeah, that's right. Get out of here. Get, get, get. Shoo. All right. What is the next problem, Hannah? Hannah Montana? There's one final thing this demon is going to try. Ritualistic candles. It has the power to manifest them inside its area of influence. It's vital and very, very important that if you see one, to extinguish it. If you let it keep burning, the demon will be able to draw power from it. It won't try anything new after it gets this part, so you won't have to worry about any more new rules. Really? That's it? I probably could have gone for at least two more. Oh, and I also forgot something. This is very important, too. Whatever you do, make sure you don't... Okay! We're boned. There's a new rule that I don't know about. Candles? No. I can barely see it past my snoot. You two are asleep. Good. Just keep on sleeping. Oh, this one is open. I didn't even notice that. Hey, Tammy, you're sleeping. That's good. Just sleep well, dear. Oh, actually, there's a phone call. You listen closely. You don't hear anything, so you don't say nothing. Alright, good. Get out of here. I should recheck the phones now that I think about it. Okay, nothing on that one. Also gotta make sure to close those doors. Don't want them to hang open. The windows are being opened more. Oh, this light's flickering. All right, a light is fixed. Hey, to put the whole K. We're closing that. Don't know what that was. Don't want to know what that was. I'm just gonna assume it was Santa Claus. He came early this year. All the windows are open. Geez. Uh, nothing here. Nothing in here. All right, let's get Daddle before he shows up again. All right, doesn't seem like there's any more problems. Oh, and the ba da ba. I'm an ant eater. I'll, 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 I'll scoop out your brains with my long tongue. The time is 3 a.m. All the windows have been closed. All the televisions have been turned off. None of the lights had been left flickering. All the phones have been answered correctly. All the candles have been extinguished. And then it arrived. Oh no, it's the demon! Why don't you just open a door? I mean, jeez, what are you, a vampire? You can't come in unless you're invited? Oh, maybe that's it. You were invited to the hospital, but you have to be invited to individual rooms to go in them. Or not. I don't know. Wait, is this phone going off? Okay, no. I sure hope that's not a thing that can happen. All right. Nothing wrong in here. Ah, you're not allowed to be there, sir. Nothing wrong in here. Oh, answer this before Tammy wakes up. You listen closely. Whispering. Well, I've got a secret passcode for you. Go fudge yourself. You can sense their presence in their size is deported. 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 I deported. <laughs> they've been deported. Go back to Mexico. I don't know why the demon's Mexican. But. I don't know. Everything seems right as rain there. 
No satanic candles. No TV either. Flickering lights, flickering... Oh, flickering lights! Alright, good. And I think that's all she wrote. Let's get back. I hope he isn't at the door again. I'm a rat now! I'm a rat! I'll eat your eyes! The time was 4 a.m. All the windows closed. TVs off. Lights normal. Phones answered. Candles extinguished. And then it showed up once again. How much longer do I need to do this for? Like, is this demon gonna get any more powerful or what? That's right, scoot. Now... Now it's four o'clock. It's Ant Eater turn. Let's see, nothing in the waiting room. All right, room one, nothing. Room two, nothing. Suspicious. Room three, all right, Tammy is safe. For now. Window, TV. No windows. You're not allowed to have fresh air. Fresh air is illegal. Oh no, you're telling me sweet nothings? Well, how about you say nothing? Yeah, that's what I thought. Get out of here. Light. Gosh darn, you need to fix these things. Or just remove them. You know, that works too. You know, you just remove the lights entirely. No windows. I don't care if no one's in here. And that light's just off now. Hey, you get back here! You get back here! You get back here! I'm gonna punch you! I'm gonna punch you! Arrgh! I'm an angry anteater, you can't stop me! I had a feeling that they were going to do that. But, uh, yeah, I think we're settled. The time was 5 a.m. Windows closed. TVs off. Lights not flickering. Phones answered. Candles gone. The sun began to rise upon our little town. And the demon could not stay in this world much longer. However, in direct violation of the Vermander Pact, no blood had been spilled that night. The most important part of the pact had not been fulfilled, which meant that the agreement was now null and void. After generations of being enslaved to the Vermander family, the demon was finally free. And though it not had much time left, it knew exactly how it wished to spend its final moments. Uh-oh! Oh, Mr. Vermander! Hannah, what in the world are you doing back here this early? Hannah. Oh, it's you. Don't you have some work to be doing? What do you want? Why are you looking at me like that? Don't you go forgetting that you work for me, mister. I command you to get out of here. Why won't you listen to me, you stupid...
The angry howls of the demon echoed throughout the town that morning. And then the estate fell deathly quiet. As it turned out, Hannah hadn't left the Vermander estate that previous night. Uh-oh. She had been far too tired to return home after feeding instructions through the phone all night. Instead, she fell asleep in one of the manor's empty rooms. She was awakened by the awful noises emitting from upstairs. Hannah climbed the stairs and quickly made her way to the office. Oh no, Hannah, please. Inside, there lie J.P. Vermander. Beaten, unmoving, and absolutely mangled. But against all the odds, he was still alive. Hannah had a choice to make. A large part of her wanted to simply leave him there, to give him the same disrespect and disregard for what he showed to others. She turned to leave. But deep down, she knew this wasn't the right thing to do. And as bad as he was, she would not stoop to his level. So, instead, she called for help. Huh. Wow. And in an ironic turn of events, J.P. Vermander's life was saved by the very same hospital he tried to get him uh, rid of. Despite their rightful and justified anger at the man, Dr. Etta and Nurse Morton treat him no different than any other patient. And he was soon on the road to a full recovery. During his stay in the hospital, he was given a room near the front. Day after day, he watched as the patients as they came and went. He watched as the hospital's only doctor and sole nurse did their best to help every person that arrived. And as he watched, he realized something. What? Those confusing numbers on that little piece of paper actually meant something. Those numbers represented actual people. People with lives and emotions. People that just wanted to get the help they deserved. It took a near-death experience at the hands of an angry demon, an intensive stay in the hospital, but J.P. finally felt something that no Vermander had felt for a long time. Remorse. And he vowed he would do everything in his power to try to make amends. However, due to the pact being broken, most of the wealth and power it granted was soon lost to crippling debt. With no other options, J.P. sold off his entire estate and made his and his assets to pay his dues. And the last remaining bit of his fortune was donated to the hospital. As a sign of goodwill, Dr. Edda let him stay in one of their vacant rooms until he could get back on his feet. He is currently working as a food delivery driver to make ends meet as he wasn't qualified for anything else. Though he does miss his money and his old lifestyle, in the end, he's just thankful to be alive. Morton settled into his new job as a nurse just fine. Despite the rough first night, he grew to love the strange new town and its people. In the end, he knew that the decision to move here was the best one for both him and his daughter. Oh, I didn't know you had a daughter. Etta is still the best and only doctor in town. She plans to use the donation money to renovate the hospital so that they can provide the best care possible for years and years ahead. And now that they had an actual budget, she decided to hire an accountant. 
Hannah happily accepted the position, as her old job was no longer available. She is glad to finally have a boss that appreciates her work. And though it took a while, she did eventually forgive Vermander for all his misdeeds. The hospital had a bright future ahead of it, and everyone was on good terms. And that's all that mattered. Hey, she's smiling. That's great. So is that the end? That was the Vermander Curse, and I got two stars. I don't know what for, but I got two stars, which means that I did amazing. So, that's going to do it for this video. My lungs are almost completely out of breath, because this is almost an hour long. So I'm going to end it right now. This has been Red Luster, and remember, like, comment, subscribe, do the YouTube thing, guys. Please. Oh, and if you can, share with your friends. If you really enjoy my content, maybe one of your friends will too. But that's enough shilling. This has been Red Luster, signing out.